you, I think, were like the first ones to really out of Hollywood start talking about it. Well, you were. Yeah. What made you decide to go there? Because you didn't have to tell people what was happening in your bedroom, but you did. Or not happening. <laughs> Eventually <laughs> happening. Eventually happening, but not right away. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> right. We had to wait. <laughs> you know, I think we just wanted to share because uh, relationships are so hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, truth be told, there's not a lot of guidance out there. And so we wanted to share our truth and yeah. that waiting to have sex was a critical part of the healthy foundation of our marriage and relationship. And we both were doing it independently. You know, I had yeah. been doing it for years before Megan and I got together uh, because, you know, being out in the world, speaking and preaching, telling one thing, there was a time when I was doing something different. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to reconcile who I was in public and in person, and in private, excuse me. So that's why I decided to wait. Yeah. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna wait until marriage after I wasn't waiting. And then Megan and I got together and found out she had been waiting. Yeah. And Megan, <laughs> as I understand it, you've said in the past, you knew this was your husband yeah. before he knew. Yeah. How did that, how's that possible? Well, it's really interesting because we had met four years prior to working on Jumping the Broom. And he was the executive on Jumping the Broom. I was the actress on the film. And I was on the tail end of kind of um, not so great relationship. Not because the person we just weren't right for each other. But um, I really got a chance to get to know him on set. And I thought, man, that's the kind of guy I wish I could marry. And that was it. He's the guy who gives you the job. That's, that's all I thought about it. And then I got back from Nova Scotia filming. And I was like, man, Lord, I'm at a really hard place, like at a standstill in my life. And I'm really hitting a wall. What am I supposed to be doing? And the first thing that God told me was that it was time to get out of that relationship. The second thing that God told me was that it was time to be celibate. And the third thing that God told me was that Devon was my husband. And I was like, OK. And I was like, <laughs> so, and I didn't know him that well. And I was like, so what do I do, Lord? And God was just like, nothing. Just work on yourself. So I spent the next nine months um, healing, working on damage from childhood, growing up in the business, things you just go through in life. And about five months in, I started telling friends and family that Devon was my husband. They were like, oh, really? They were like, does he know that? And I'm like, no. They're like, so you had so not even gone on a date? No, no. Didn't know anything about it? I didn't talk to him at all. This could have gone real creepy. Uh, yeah. She's <laughs> <laughs> telling everybody, and somebody says, Devon, she, I don't know I don't her. I know what she's <laughs> talking about. Yeah, no, I was just, at the, at the time, I was an executive um, for Sony yeah. working on the movie, and she was one of the stars. So I was yeah. like, hey, you know what? <laughs> That's the talent. I'm the executive. Like, I would never cross that line. Uh, and also, it's Megan Good. So I'm thinking, like, yo, like, that's just, you know, Megan Good, the stars, the moon, you know, they're all in another stratosphere. And so when it came to reality that, like, wait a minute, at the Jumping the Broom premiere, nine months after the movie was done, we started talking, and it felt like, wait, I think Megan is interested in me. Oh, meanwhile, I had told all my girlfriends, I was like, yeah. you meet my husband tonight, and everyone's like, okay, so we're following him around the party like teenage schoolgirls, like, looking at him and stuff. And then we went out two weeks later, and then yeah. literally... In the time of going out, it was 10 months later we were engaged and two months later we were married. So yeah. over the span of, what, 13 months, you yes. were celibate yeah. in the relationship. Yes. Um, you make this pledge to each other, you make it to God, but we're yeah. all humans and our bodies react sure. to things. Absolutely. So did you avoid kissing? Did you, a massage was out of order? <laughs> I mean, because th these things, I'm just being honest. Okay, Come we're on, all you wrong can't all of it. Come on, Tamara. I mean, you know my husband. <laughs> yes, I do. Right, That's my, my husband, like, massaged my shoulder. I'm like, hey. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Maybe not as often because we have a baby now, but hey, you know? <laughs> but it's like, how did you avoid triggers? You know, it's one of the things we talk about, you know, in the book, we talk about the power of delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. We live in a time where everybody th wants everything now, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of value when we just wait and sit back and say, you know what, I'm going to delay this because if I do, I'll get what I actually want when it's time for it. So mm -hmm. for us, we had to know our triggers. Now, th that means some nights we could not Netflix and chill, okay? We couldn't <laughs> do it. We, did you cuddle? <laughs> you didn't days, stay in the same house. Every day was different. No, we no, had separate no, houses. We yeah. didn't move in until... Uh, and you didn't have any sleepovers? Her. No, we, we had sleepovers. Oh. Yeah. But again, you got to know your boundaries. You got to know your truth. So pillow in the middle? Sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. Really? It just depends. It just depends. Like, depends on how strong you felt on that day. So some yeah. days I'd be weak, she'd be strong. Some days she'd be weak, I'd be strong. So yeah. it was both of us wanting the same thing, but being okay to let moment by moment dictate what we did in those moments.